Let the church say good hear me. Father, we thank you for tonight. We bless your name. We thank you because you brought us here for a good purpose. And we pray that your purpose will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. The purpose of Satan will not be fulfilled in our lives. The purpose of a sinful world will not be fulfilled in our church. Bring us, Lord, to the platform of faith and help us by faith to move on and to be who you want us to be in Jesus' name. Well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the whole church said, We're coming to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Tonight we're looking at faith afresh, and the topic is the expectation and realization of faith. The expectation and the realization of faith. Faith is important, very essential for a relationship with God. Faith is very important, essential for our Christian experiences. Faith is essential for our walk with God, for our healing, for our deliverance, for our victory in battle, for our dominion over the enemy for our exploits and fruitfulness, for our possessing all our possession and for our entrance into heaven. Faith is based and anchored on God's unfailing word, not on our feeling, not on our senses, not on our sight, not on our thoughts. Faith is not based on our imagination. Faith is not based on earthly knowledge, on human possibilities, on our emotional state, or tangible evidence. God's promise, that's the foundation of faith, God's pronouncement. God's power is greater than all these other things. Faith will say, God has said it. I believe it. I receive it. I confess it. I realize it. I believe it before I see it. A second Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. Once again, we're speaking tonight on the expectation and the realization of faith. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the expectation of faith through God's promises. We look at the promises of God. And from those promises, as we interpret the promises, apply the promises, personalize the promises, 
internalize the promises, embrace the promises, will say, what does this say to me? What does this promise ascertain? I'm going to have the expectation of faith through God's promises. Number two, the expression of faith in God's presence. We come to the presence of God and we look at the promises of God and we read and recite those promises in the presence of the Almighty. And we express our confidence in those promises of God, knowing that nothing can change any of the promises of God. Number three, the experience of faith by God's people. The experience of faith by God's people. I pray God will bring you into all the experiences of faith we ought to have in Jesus' name. Point number one, the expectation of faith through God's promises. In Jeremiah chapter 29, reading from verse 11, Jeremiah Chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace. Amen. And not of evil, another amen, to give you, to give me, to give me, he will give me, to give you an expected end. That expectation will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me. Somebody there tonight will find the Lord. You're calling upon the Lord. You're expecting the Lord to do something in your life. Ye shall seek me and find me. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. Faith expects. Expects God's word to be fulfilled. Faith expects. Expects God's power to prevail. Whatever the challenge whatever the difficulty, and whatever the crossroad you find yourself, faith expects that God's power will prevail. Faith expects that God's promise will be realized. Faith in God, faith in the true God, does not expect him to fail. Faith in God does not expect Satan to be higher than God or stronger than God. Faith does not expect that evil spirit or evil people will be stronger than the Almighty. Faith does not expect that what we see will be more real than our invisible God. The expectation of faith is the performance of all the promises of God. The expectation of faith is that your prayer will be answered. My prayer will be answered. Our united prayer will be answered. The expectation of faith is that there will be solution for all problems. There will be freedom from all bondages. There will be righteousness in our daily living. There will be power for every hour. Faith expects there will be sufficiency in Christ. He has promised he will not fail. Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 23. 
We're looking at verse 19. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. As he said, and shall he not do it? Everything he has said, everything he has promised, everything he has spoken, he will do in Jesus' name. Or as he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Anyone strong enough to reverse the promise of God in your life? I said anyone strong enough to reverse the promise of God in your life? Balaam cannot reverse it. Saul cannot reverse it. Haman cannot reverse it. The enemies of progress cannot reverse it. Evil spirits cannot reverse it. And any silent, quiet, determined enemy behind the curtain from the village cannot reverse it and will not reverse it in Jesus' name. He said, he has blessed and I cannot reverse it. He has not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Neither has he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord is God, is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He has, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. Surely, there is no enchantment against Jacob. There's no enchantment against me. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel what God has done. Behold, the people shall rise up like a great lion. Our people, the church, will rise up like a great lion and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall lie down until he eats the prey and drink the blood of the slain. I didn't hear my amen. amen. For you to be at this level of faith, at this level of confidence, at this level of expectation, faith must be well defined in your life. Faith, F, forsake all known sins. If faith is to operate without a hindrance, if faith is to preach without anything that you'll say no, if you are going to have power and privilege and the possibilities of faith in your life, look at verse 21. He has not beheld iniquity in Jacob. He must look at our lives in the private, in the public, and there's no iniquity. F, forsake all known sins. A, abandon all strange suggestions. The suggestions of the stranger that will come to you. Here is the way a child of God ought to walk. Here is the life a child of God ought to lead. Here is the path a child of God ought to take. And then the suggestion of the stranger for you to have your own way. That's a stranger talking. And if you're going to manifest faith, 
Number one, you forsake all known sins. Number two, you abandon all strange suggestions. Number three, ignore all symptoms. Let's say you are sick. You will not be sick in Jesus' name. You didn't say amen to that one? Let's say somebody is sick. And there are symptoms of the sickness. And now he prays. He prays in faith. He must make sure as he prays, you forsake all sins. He must make sure as he prays, abandon all strange suggestions, the suggestions of strangers. He must make sure as he prays, ignore all the symptoms. The promise of God is greater, is higher, is stronger than all the symptoms. She trusts in the Savior. He has spoken. Nothing can reverse that. He has spoken. Nothing can change that. He has spoken. And he died on the cross. And he sacrificed himself to ascertain and to affirm the promises. Trust in the Savior. Each hold fast scripture. Hold fast the scripture. That scripture, that promise you're holding on to. Hold it fast and let your expectation be based on that. Look at Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. I will hasten my word to perform it. Performance in your life. Fulfillment in your life. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 25. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 25. I am the Lord. I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. In your life, it shall come to pass. In our church, it will come to pass. For I am the Lord. I will speak. And the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. Verse 28. Therefore say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. But the word which I have spoken shall be done, shall be done, shall be done, says the Lord God. Look at Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 5. Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus says unto him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Did you say amen to that? Read it from that word, but. But. Yeah. 
You say that again. Now you will say it with the preacher's voice. Your servant will be healed. Your hand serving you will be healed. Your brain serving you will be healed. Your eyes serving you will be healed. Every part of your body will be healed in Jesus' name. Your son, your daughter will be healed. Your wife, your husband will be healed. Your loved one will be healed in Jesus' name. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant do this, and he do as it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, that I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east, and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of tears. And Jesus said unto the centurion, remember what the centurion had said, unto Jesus speak the word only and my servant shall be healed now Jesus did exactly that and Jesus said unto the centurion go thy way as thou hast believed so be done unto thee and the servant was healed that self same hour. God will do it in your family. He will do it in your life. Your faith will be honored in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two now. The expression of faith in God's presence. The Lord has given us promises. And then we come to the presence of the Lord and we express ourselves in prayer. The expression of faith in God's presence. In 2 Samuel chapter 7. 2 Samuel chapter 7. Reading from verse 25. Second. Samuel chapter 7, verse 25. And now, O Lord God, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house, establish it forever and tell me. And Say it aloud and say it well and do as thou hast said. That's how to pray. You look at the promises of God, you embrace a particular promise of God, you apply a particular promise of God to yourself. And you hold on to that promise without wavering. And then you go to the presence of God in prayer. And you say the word that thou hast spoken concerning me, concerning thy servant, and concerning his house, any member of his family, concerning your church, establish it forever and do as thou Hast said, and once that word comes out of your mouth, 
you believe it, you stand on it, it will not fail. The word of God will not fail your mouth in Jesus' name. First Kings chapter 17. In First Kings chapter 17, verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, in whose presence I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. According to my word. That's the expression of faith. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which is speak by Elijah. When that word comes out of your mouth, stand on it. Believe it. It will happen. Second Kings chapter 7, verse 1. Second Kings chapter 7, verse 1. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Make sure the word of the Lord, not the word of man, not the word of unbelievers, not the word of contradictors, the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. That's the word of the Lord. Heaven and earth may pass away. The word of the Lord will not pass away. Verse 2. Then a Lord, on whose hand the king gleamed, answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, my this thing be, and he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. I pray that will not be your lot. Even if a man, an officer, a man in authority, contradicts the word of God, the word of God will contradict him and the word of God will still be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Look at verse 16. And the people went out. That's the people that heard the prophecy. The people that heard the word of God. The people that heard the declaration of the prophet of the Lord they heard it the previous day. And the Lord, a Lord, on whom the king leaned because of his authority, he thought he had the boldness to contradict the word of God. And he said, even if the Lord will open the windows of heaven, can that be? And the man of God was shocked that anybody could mention the Lord flippantly like that and said, even if the Lord will do this, how can that be? And the man of the Lord pronounced, you'll see it with your eyes, God's word will be fulfilled. But unfortunately, your unbelief will not allow you to eat part of it. I will eat part of the goodness of the Lord. I will see it. I will see it. I will have it, I will possess it, I will benefit from it. Verse 16, 
and the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel. According, tell me, according, tell me, according, say it aloud, according to the word of the Lord, that word will always be fulfilled. Acts chapter 27, Acts chapter 27, reading from verse 25. Acts 27, verse 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. Can we say that together? For I believe God. Can you say that again? Anytime there's a challenge, remember this, I believe God. Any time the difficulties, remember this, for I believe God. Any time the situation appears to be hopeless, remember this, I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. It shall be. It shall be even as it was told me. It shall be in our lives in Jesus' name. The expression of faith is positive, practical, persistent. Faith expresses God's promises, not man's fears. Faith expresses God's promises, not Satan's doubts. Faith expresses God's promises, not the enemy's threats. Faith expresses God's promises, not present circumstances. And faith does not express bodily pains, historical ideas, or current trends. Faith contains against fear. Faith contradicts contrary feeling. Faith calms all fright. You're afraid. All that frightening circumstances. Faith calms all of them. All frightening thoughts. Faith corrects all false suppositions. Faith controls the fury of the enemy, enemy's fire. Faith will control everything. And faith confirms the faithfulness of God. Our God is faithful. He cannot fail. He will not fail. What he said he will do, he will do. No matter what doubts may arise, he will do what he has promised he will do. Faith continues holding fast until the promise is fulfilled, until the promise becomes a reality. It tells us in Psalm 16, verse 8, Psalm 16, we're reading from verse 8. I have said the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. 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 Set the Lord before you. Don't allow Satan to come in between you and God. Set the Lord before you.
Don't allow those circumstances to come between you and God. Set the Lord before you. Don't allow any human being to come in between you and God. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. You will not be moved. Psalm 62, verse 6. Psalm 62, verse 6. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. Say it now. The Lord confirm that your life in Jesus' name. Psalm 108. Psalm 108. We're reading from verse 1. O oh God, my heart is fixed. Whatever the problem, you'll not be shaking. O oh God, my heart is fixed. Whatever you feel in your body, you hold on to the promise of God. And you're not shake, you're not move. Oh God, my heart is fixed. Whatever the storm, howling storm, or the waves beating upon your ship, your boat, oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Your heart will remain fixed in Jesus' name. Satan will not have the upper hand. Evil will not have the upper hand. Psalm 57, 5, 7. Psalm 57, verse 7. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. Challenges are in the world. And situations might look dark and dreary. But then you have the word of God and you express your mind, you express your faith unto God and you say, my heart is fixed. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. While you're singing and giving praise like Paul and Silas, the foundations of the prison were shaken. All those prison doors will open and the expectation of the evil one will be nullified from your life in Jesus' name. Psalm 112. Psalm 112, verse 7. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. He shall not be afraid bad news there, there, there will not shake you, will not move you, will not make you lose your faith. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid until he sees desire upon his enemies. He has dispersed. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. 
the desire that you are crushed, that you are defeated, that you fail, that you fall, their desires shall be destroyed. Their desires shall perish. Look at Psalm 118. Psalm 118. I'm reading from verse 17. I think you should read this yourself. Open your Bible. Psalm 118. Have you opened the chapter? Verse 17. One, two, three, go. You will fulfill your destiny. All that God has appointed for you. Do and be in Jesus' name. Read that verse 17 again. You know, as you look at the newspapers nowadays, they say this one has killed himself. Another one has killed herself. Suicide almost everywhere, every week. It will not happen to you. However dark the rising may be, however challenging the situation may be, However upside down your circumstances may be, God has a purpose for your life. That purpose will be fulfilled. And Satan cannot turn your life upside down. You will not die prematurely. Read that verse 17 again. One, two, three, go. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Verse 27, God is the Lord. He has showed us the light. Bind the sacrifice with, with cords even unto the horns of the altar. That means you retain your consecration and you say nothing will move you, nothing will shake you, and you will not die prematurely. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10, I read from verse 23. Hebrews chapter 10, we're reading from verse 23. It tells us in verse 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. He is faithful, you will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. Point number three now, the experience of faith by God's people. The experience of faith by God's people. We're looking at Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, reading from verse 16. Romans chapter 4, verse 16. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickness the dead 
and call it those things which be not as though they were who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be and be not weak in faith and be not weak in faith and be not weak in faith he considered not is somebody now dead when you have faith in god there are things you don't consider and he talks about abraham because he was strong in faith not weak in faith he considered not his somebody now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of sarah's womb he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief but he was strong in faith giving glory to god and being fully persuaded that what he had promised is able also to perform and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. As we look at the experience of God's people, and he gives us Abraham as a forerunner, as an example as a model for us to follow you see number one the foundation of faith the written of promise the foundation of faith is the written of promise look at verses 16 and 17 therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed the promise that is now written, the promise that is now given, the promise that is now for everyone, and it is by grace. It says it will be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, not of the circumcision of the Jews only, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, as it is written. Look at the written promise. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickness the dead and called it those things which be not as though they were. The foundation of faith. That's the written promise. Number two, calling those things which be not as though they were. You have not seen it yet, but calling those things which be not as though they were. The symptoms may be they have not changed, but calling those things which be not as though they were. You have prayed for supply, for abundance. You have not seen the provision yet. And yet calling those things which be not as though they were. The latter part of verse 17. Even God, who quickness the dead, does we believed, And he called it those things which be not as though they were. Number three, believing and hoping against hope. The situation appears hopeless, but you have the promise of God, and you have the partnership of the Lord. The situation is totally hopeless, and you feel helpless, and yet standing on the promise that cannot fail, 
believing and hoping against hope. Verse 18. Who against hope believes in hope. Remember, you have to make practical application of this. You have a challenge in your life, a challenge in your body, a challenge in your family, a challenge in the ministry, a challenge with your spiritual life, and the case looks hopeless, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be, and so shall thy seed be. I said, so shall the fruit be. Number four, not weak in faith, not considering physical conditions. That's what stopped many people from having and realizing the miracle they desire, the answer to their prayer that they want. They have prayed, and then they look at their body, or they look at their circumstances, and things are totally dead. And they look at the conditions, and they look unbelievable. Look at verse 19. Be not weak in faith. Your faith will not be weak. I said your faith will not be weak. Even tonight, your faith will not be weak. Weak faith, weak amen. Strong faith, strong amen. <laughs> and be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. His own body now dead. No more active. Activity zero. Operation zero. Possibilities zero. Counts zero. Medical report zero. And what he felt in the body zero. He considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. In spite of it all, your miracle will come. Not weak in faith, not considering the physical conditions. Number five, not staggering in unbelief and not shaking. Not staggering in unbelief, not shaking. Whatever God said will be, will be. I say whatever God said will be, will be. Whatever God has promised will be fulfilled. Whatever we see, whatever we feel, however things may be in the natural, the supernatural will soon take over. Verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. No staggering in unbelief, no shaking. Look at the next scene here. Strong in faith, glorifying God before the answer comes. Strong in faith, glorifying God before the answer comes. The latter part of us 20, but he was strong in faith giving glory to God. You will yet praise the Lord. I will yet praise the Lord. Number seven, he was fully persuaded. He was fully persuaded. Verse 21, I'm being fully persuaded what he had promised he was able also to perform. I am persuaded. I am persuaded. Every promise of God to me, every promise of God to me will be fulfilled. I want you to notice something here. The word faith, 
the word faith. We're looking at verse 16. Therefore, it is of faith. Therefore, it is of faith. Again, look at the latter part of verse 16. But to that also which is of the faith of Abraham. Faith of Abraham. Faith of Abraham. That's the second time that word faith is mentioned. And then in verse 18, who against hope believes in hope. That's another form of the word faith. He believed in hope. In verse 19, and be not weak in, tell me, in faith, you will not be weak in faith. Your faith will not be weak even tonight in Jesus' name. You must carry the blessing of God home. And then in verse 20, but she was strong in faith giving glory to God. Then verse 21, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Able also to perform. Able also in your life tonight, he's able. In our families tonight, he's able. In our church tonight, he is able. It will do it in your life in Jesus' name. Very important faith, F, faithfulness to his word. Faithfulness to his word. We know he cannot deny himself. He cannot deny his word. He cannot deny his promise. He cannot say, I didn't say that. He cannot say, I didn't mean that. He means what he has said. He said what he meant, F, Faithfulness to his word. A, assurance of his willingness. He wouldn't have said it if he was not willing to do it. He said he will save. He's willing. He will heal. He's willing. He will deliver. He's willing. That he is assurance of his willingness. I, immutability of his witness. He has given witness to what he's going to do. He said, this is what I will do. And the Son witnessed it. And the Holy Ghost witnessed that. And the apostles witnessed that. And the reaching word, the Bible witnesses that. There's the immutability of his willingness. Because I know he's faithful to his word. He cannot change. Satan cannot change him. Evil spirits cannot change him. Evil powers cannot change him. The economy of the country cannot change him. The security or insecurity around cannot change him because of his faithfulness to his word. That's why we have faith. Because of assurance of his willingness. That's why we have faith. Tonight, you have assurance. You will not be disappointed. He will do and fulfill his word in your life in Jesus' name. Immutability of his witness, it's immutable, it's unchangeable. I am God, I change not. Triumph of his will, triumph of his will. Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And if nobody can contradict that will, and his will is triumphant in heaven, here on earth, his will will be triumphant. In your body, his will will be triumphant. In your family, his will will be triumphant. The triumph of his will. A, faithfulness to his word. A, assurance of his willingness. I, immutability of his witness. T, triumph of his will. H, the holiness in his wonder. The holiness in his wonder. If he says no after he has said yes, there will be no holiness, and we cannot wonder at him. He will be like man. 
If he said, this is the wonder I am going to perform in your life, and then he turns around and says, I'm sorry, I'm not able to. We will not wonder at his holiness, but the angels, the cherubim and seraphim said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. And because he's holy, in praises and